This picture widget right here is also linked to my friend's phone. That way, if he updates it with a new picture, the widget on my phone also gets updated. The app that lets me accomplish this is called Widget Share, and I can even let a ton of my other friends also control the picture frame when I send them the widget ID. Very simple, and it's kind of exciting to see if your friends or loved ones have updated the widgets with heartwarming memories. Another heartwarming memory is the best Android app series that you guys are always looking forward to at the beginning of each month. Don't worry, just like the previous episodes, I've come up with a solid list of 10 apps for the month of March. And all I ask in return is if you can please drop a quick thumbs up if you download at least one app. And if you're new and end up downloading two or more, consider getting subscribed with the notification bell turned on. Quality videos like this are released every week so you're not going to want to miss out. If you're an advanced Android user like myself, then you most likely have had to deal with ADB commands at least once in your life. And we all know how annoying the process can be. You have to connect your phone to the computer, make sure that the correct files are installed, and that they're up to date. It's such a hassle. Now I instead use LADB to let me type those same ADB commands right on my phone without needing a computer. Yup, it works like a charm. Plus I can even remove bloatware by simply typing pm uninstall dash k dash dash user zero and the package name of the system app that I want to remove. To find the package name of each app, I actually use App Inspector. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked here, but LADB works like a charm as possible through wireless debugging. To connect to it, you just split screen the LADB app and the system settings. Then within the system settings, you hop into developer options and then the wireless debugging section. Tap on pair device with pairing code and from there, you'll need to type in the numbers given. The pairing code is the one that has a bigger font, and the port is the last five numbers of that IP address. Once you type those numbers in and hit OK, you'll receive a constant notification letting you know that wireless debugging is enabled. And that's it. You'll only need to do the setup process at least once, and now every time you launch LEDB, you'll automatically get a notification that wireless debugging is enabled, and you can begin writing out those ADB commands immediately. A pretty spectacular app, but just a heads up, when you write out those ADB commands within the text field, make sure to not include the text ADB shell anymore that's at the beginning. Just start with PM grant instead because you're already interfacing directly with the shell. On a computer, the ADB shell text is required, but in the app, it's not. Capiche? Finally, a huge thank you to Ratio Individual 2822 for recommending LEDB on my subreddit page at How To Men. If you also recommend an app over there and I end up choosing it for the best apps video, I'll be sure to shout out your name on the next video. Now this next app isn't an app at all. It's a progressive web app. A fancier way of saying a website that can be turned to look like an app. Well, the website is called rdrop.link and it lets you share files in a very easy way. Just tap on drop files here and select the files you want to share. From there, you'll get a QR code, which the other person can scan to download and receive the file you shared. Or you can instead share the link if you're not next to the person that you want to share it to. Pretty simple and free to use without any compression or size limit. You can also add the website to your home screen and it'll turn into a progressive web app. Next, we have Anti-Stalker, and they are a sponsor, but it's a fantastic way of improving the security of your phone since it lets you know which of your apps are using certain permissions in the background, like your microphone, camera, or data, without you even knowing it. I know Android 12 already lets you know this through privacy dots, but Anti-Stalker somehow works even better. Within the monitoring console, I can see which apps have used my microphone and camera and for how long. Plus, it'll even let me know which apps have sent my data in the background and how much data was sent. It'll honestly scare you. Luckily, Anti-Stalker lets you block those pesky apps from sending data within the data monitoring section. Any apps that I don't need to monitor, I can simply whitelist them within the monitoring console. But the protection doesn't just stop there. Anti-Stalker also has an anti-theft alarm feature which plays a loud alarm anytime someone tries to grab your phone or remove it from the charger. It's perfect for public places like airport charging stations. It also has a permission manager to let you see which apps have been granted access to the internet, the microphone, etc. A root checker to see if your phone is rooted, an option to mute your microphone entirely so that no one can listen in on you, and a lot more. Overall, it's one of the best privacy-driven apps out there with the developers constantly improving it and adding in new features. It's free to download and will seriously improve your phone security, so make sure to use my link in the description if you want to support the channel. 
If you use Spotify to listen to multiple podcasts, you probably know how unorganized and intertwined your podcast can be with all of your regular playlists and music. It's like a jungle in there. Well, an app called Podify will connect your Spotify account and separate your podcast from your music, cleaning everything up and freeing you from that headache of needing to find a needle in a haystack. Spotify lets you listen to your podcast without needing to open up Spotify. It will notify you when new episodes get released. You can bookmark your favorite episodes or ones that you haven't even listened to yet and filter episodes by duration and played status. It's a spectacular app that is completely free and has no ads. Plus, since it just got released, I'm excited to see what other kinds of features the developer will include in the future. For those who own a smartwatch, you may want to check out Radius Locker. It's a simple app that will automatically lock your phone anytime your smartwatch falls out of connection range. It can be a lifesaver if you accidentally leave your phone behind at a restaurant, a park, or any other public place. Plus, it disables the biometrics so you're only forced to type in the pin, password, or pattern until you unlock it. An extra neat option within the Wear OS companion app is that you can still lock your phone manually while your watch is still in range. But it doesn't just have to be a smartwatch. It can be any Bluetooth device, including a speaker, headphone, etc. It's a very handy app, and I'm not sure how much it'll affect the battery life because it's gonna constantly need to run in the background. I guess time will tell. Either way, it's an extremely handy and unique app. We all know that having an ethernet connection will help improve the internet speeds of your laptop or desktop. But what you probably didn't know is that you can also wake your computer from your smartphone by just tapping on a quick settings tile. It's that simple. I can even turn on my computer from my smartwatch. It's all possible through an underrated app called Wake on LAN. You just type in the MAC address, IP address, and select the port number. For Windows users, all that information can be found within the settings under network and internet, and then properties. The MAC address is labeled as physical address. The broadcast address is labeled as IPv4 address. Type those numbers into the app and hit save. Also on Windows, you're gonna to wanna to go within the device manager, select network adapters, right click on your ethernet connection, properties, advanced, and then scroll down until you see wake on magic packet. Make sure it is enabled from the drop down menu. Finally, go to the power management tab and toggle on every option. Hit okay, and now every time you put your computer to sleep, you can turn it on with the app. Just make sure it's not shut down or it won't work. I'm not sure why, but sometimes the best Android apps are just not on the Play Store, and that's the case with Fennec F-Droid. It's an alternative Firefox browser that just removes the things that suck about Firefox. It stops the telemetry data, which Firefox collects, and it removes some proprietary bits, like some from Google services for notifications. It's still based on the latest Firefox release and still has various Mozilla and Google services within it that can track you, but it lines up the load. Plus, one of the things that I like about Firefox is that they support add-ons similar to how Chrome on desktop supports extensions to provide extra goodies like ad blocking, dark mode for every website, HTTPS everywhere, and a lot more. Switching over to the games, first we have Gun Fungus. This is a really fun 2D platform shooting game where you get to shoot at fungus monsters. Sure, the concept sounds a bit stupid, but it's got spectacular controls, and with quick upgrades and tons of action, it's hard to put the phone down. Your objective is to complete 30 levels each time you play, featuring an intense number of monsters that will try and shoot you and kill you. And every so often, you get quick upgrades and healing so that it's not so tough. Here's the trick. If at any time you die within those 30 rooms, you need to start from scratch with no upgrades or mods. I know, it's pretty annoying, but it's doable to make it through. You just need quick reflexes to dodge all the bullets and good strategies to destroy the strongest monsters first. Oh, and there are also mini boss fights thrown in there, so good luck. Gun Fungus is free to download and low on ads, which makes it a unique goldmine of a game. Next is Micro RPG. It's a fantasy style puzzle slash attacker game with a card based weapons and character system. You're placed in a circle and you get to bring three weapons of carrying range to attack any incoming monsters. Each time you attack, the monsters get a step closer and if you don't kill them in time or back them off, they'll hurt you. You can only attack a certain amount of monsters each time so you have to strategize and choose the best ratio. It gets even tougher though because the attacking pointer spins around and you need to tap it at just the right moment to attack your preferred targets. On top of that, your overall objective is to be able to move on to the next level to kill a specific amount of monsters. And you need to do it in a set amount of turns. 
So it does get pretty intense. Luckily, there is no timer, at least for the first few worlds. I can't speak on the rest of the worlds because I'm still enjoying the game just like you guys will. Either way, give it a shot and try to see how far you can get. Last but not least, we have Hellrider 3. I've been having a blast with this game because even though it's a typical runner slash racer game, it spices up the gameplay. Sometimes you're fighting against random motorcycle gangs on the road. Other times you're just cruising along the road trying to avoid any incoming traffic and seeing how far you can get. Or other times you get to do fun races where you can also attack the opponents while collecting cubes spread along the track, very similar to Mario Kart. It's got fantastic graphics, great controls, a simple storyline that isn't confusing or boring, and a ton of characters, bikes, and weapons to unlock. It's free to download and play, so why not? Anyways, that concludes the best Android apps of March 2022. I hope you guys downloaded at least one app, and if you did, a quick thumbs up would really help the video get noticed by the YouTube algorithm. If you downloaded two or more, why not get subscribed with the notification bell turned on? I promise videos like this are a weekly thing on the channel, and you'll be pleased with the quality. Either way, thank you guys so much for sticking to the end, and I'll catch you in the next one. Kapow!